and we're back once again with another reaction video, man. Thank you guys for coming back to the channel. If you guys are new, I do daily reactions each and every day. Thank you for all returning subscribers. I appreciate the support. Go ahead and drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you guys enjoyed this reaction. But today, we got top 10 cute quarterbacks to never win a Super Bowl. We're going to be checking this out. We're going to be seeing who never won a Super Bowl in the NFL. Top tier QBs. Let's get it. One week away from Super Bowl 52. With that being said, I wanted to take a look at the 10 series who never won a Super Bowl. Starting off with number two, Donovan McNabb. McNabb and the Eagles in the 2000s were constant contenders year in and year out. As the face of the Philadelphia Eagles, McNabb and his big arm led the Eagles to five NFC title games, including four straight from 2000 to 2004. His best shot came in 2004 when the Eagles finally won the NFC Championship on the back of McNabb's best season of his career. As the first player in NFL history to throw over 30-plus touchdowns and less than 10 interceptions. McNabb fell short in Super Bowl 39 against the Patriots dynasty and Tom Brady. Yeah. But even still, McNabb had a very good career worthy of the yeah, ball. Yeah, he sure did. I don't think that was a beat. He was a good player. And over 37,000 yards. From one eagle to another. I don't know. I'm, I already know Michael Vick. Michael Vick is going to be on this list, guys. I never won a ring. Obviously, it's all my football fans out there. You guys know that Michael Vick, one of the greatest QBs to ever, to ever play, never won a ring. Randall Cunningham was a quarterback with a skill set that went previously unseen. Great speed, great running ability, mixed with a cannon for an arm with just enough touch for the deep ball. While Cunningham was often supported by tough defenses in Philadelphia, he often had to carry the offense single-handedly. As a 1990 NFC... Some of these players, I'm not going to know, like Randall Cunningham, because I haven't watched, you know what I'm saying, football in the 80s and 90s. Or only in the 2000s. That's when I started watching. It's like the 2000s. 2005. 2005 and up. But I haven't watched in the 80s and 90s. But we're going to see all these QBs that uh, never won a ring. Let's get it. Player of the year, things seem to be lining up for the 1991 Eagles, with Cunningham playing his best ball and an all time great defense around him. In what could have been a championship year, Cunningham got injured in the first game and missed the entire 1991 season. Despite missing 91, Randall never had a dynamic enough offense to pull off that Super Bowl victory until 1998 with the Minnesota Vikings. Where Randall Cunningham led the lead in passer rating, exploded for 34 touchdowns, and was named first team All Pro. Unfortunately for the Vikings, at that time the highest scoring team ever, lost the NFC Championship on a missed field goal to the underdog Falcons. And number eight, Philip Rivers. Philip Rivers screams Super Bowl quarterback to me. He's a fiery competitor, he's clutch at the end, and he has to play with the hardest teammates. But unfortunately for Rivers, he so far lacks that elusive Super Bowl trophy. Philip Rivers has been one of the most consistent quarterbacks since he entered the league. Yeah. Making seven Pro Bowl trips, throwing for over 340 touchdowns and a 94.8 career passer rating. For Rivers, most of his team success came in the first three or four years in the league. The first year and second year as a starter, Philip Rivers had arguably the two best Chargers teams ever. Yeah, Antonio Gates. A dominant number one seed. 14 and 2 team in 2006 with Ladanian Tomlinson scoring a record 31 and a 2017 team that followed up with an 11 and 5 record, knocking off Peyton Manning and his Colts in the divisional round. There was only one issue though with those Chargers teams. They had to play the Patriots. And they eventually fell to the Patriots both years, including the 07 AFC Championship, where Philip Rivers actually played on a torn ACL. Wow. The years following, Rivers put together MVP like campaigns See? from 2008 to 2010. He was there. Never got a touchdowns and rating during that span. But the team could never really replicate its form around him. Yeah. Rivers still has a couple years and moments left of magic, but it's going to be very good. Rivers was so consistent. At number seven, I have Ken Anderson. 
Before Joe Montana, Montana was perfect, that's another player I didn't know. Offense, Ken Anderson was changing the way offense was played. Leading the NFL twice in yards and four times in passer rating between the years 1974 and 82, including an 81 season that saw Anderson win the NFL MVP and Offensive Player of the Year and lead the Bengals all the way to the Super Bowl. Unfortunately, the Bengals, they lost to the first ever championship of the Joe Montana 49er teams. And because of that, I really feel like Anderson's performance have been overlooked. As of 2022, for February, you know that uh, season, Bengals is going to Super Bowl. Yeah, this game. And number six, I have Warren. Got next. After winning five great cups in Canada, Warren Moon could never get his hands on the Super Bowl. Moon was a model of consistency and longevity. As a nine-time Pro Bowler, Moon retired in the top five in yards, touchdowns, and completions. A career that was filled with individual accolades, like winning the AFC and Offensive Player of the Year in 1990. Despite playing ten playoff games, Moon never made it as far as the conference championship. Mm. A victim of what was known simply as the comeback back in 1992, when the Oilers lost to the Buffalo Bills after leading by 32 points, probably has to be the worst of the worst losses for Warren Moon. Dang. Moon and his teams just never really seemed to have what it took in January. At number five, I have Jim Kelly. Jim Kelly. Four times in a row. Four times in a row, Jim Kelly led the Bills to the Super Bowl. And four times in a row, they lost. Dang. That's never happened ever in the history of the NFL besides the Buffalo Bills. Dang. And never again has the franchise made it back or even close. To be honest, the first time that Jim Kelly led these Bills to the Super Bowl was the closest. Why right against the New York Giants? During those early 90s, no quarterback was better than Kelly. At the helm of the k yeah. offense, he achieved five Pro Bowls, three All-Pros, and was the touchdown. That sucks, man, that the Bills almost won a Super Bowl four times, and they, and they never, they couldn't get over the hump. They never won. That's crazy. And I think that it's been the same QB, to, you know what I'm saying, to lead his team to the Super Bowl and never won. That's crazy. And that sucks. You know, it's, it's hard to get there. Down leader 91. Jim Kelly made the playoffs in an incredible eight of his 11 seasons. No quarterback has come closer to putting himself among the ring club than Jim Kelly. And then before, I have Dan Fouts. Dan Fouts was the quarterback to lead the best, most consistent offense of the late 70s and early 80s. Leading the NFL in yards four straight years and touchdowns two straight. Fouts broke many records. Fouts actually set the single season yardage record and then broke it himself two times. As a six-time Pro Bowler and a four-time All-Pro, Fouts won AFC Player of the Year on two occasions and played in seven playoff games. Wow. Losing two AFC championships, one to the Bengals and one to the Raiders. Fouts led a great offense, but the Chargers really never had the defense to complement them. It's too bad because Fouts in that offense was really ahead of its time. At number three, I have the first NFL player to grace Hubbard of Sports Illustrated, the man who ignited football in New York. Y.A. Tittle is a legend who isn't often brought up amongst the greats. But his impact and accomplishments are undeniable. Mm. Guys, this is interesting. Interesting video. For some of these QBs, I don't know. And it's interesting to see. He led the NFL in touchdowns on three occasions and set the NFL record twice with 33 and 36 touchdown passes. And I'm talking about in the 60s, 1962, 1963. Why Tittle set records with 33 and 36 touchdown passes. The 1963 MVP led the G-Men to three straight NFL title games. Unlucky for him, he had to play the Lombardi Packers in two of those games. Win or loss, Tittle held NFL records for yards, touchdowns, and completions when he retired. And should be remembered as one of the legends of this game. At number two, I have Fran Tarkington. Talk about what could have been. As a member of the Vikings, Fran Tarkenton played in and lost three Super Bowls. Three Super Bowls. And some of that, that is what people really remember him by. 
we're talking about the quarterback who did retire with the most wins in NFL history, the most yards in NFL history, and the most touchdowns in NFL history. An all-time pro bowler, an MVP, an offensive player of the year, Fran Tarkington was one of the most fun quarterbacks to ever watch. His style you just couldn't replicate. His feet and his arm worked as one. Not only did he throw 342 touchdowns, but he ran for another 32. Tarkington does not get celebrated today the way like a guy Terry Bradshaw does, even though everything would tell you he was a better player. When people talk about pure passers, often the first name they say is Marino. And that's why I have Dan Marino at number one. He never won. I thought he won a school. He's the best who never won the big one. I thought he was the best who never won the big one. Where's my big Marino's teams never won a Super Bowl. The crazy part, he played in 18 playoff games and only ever made it to one Super Bowl. And that was in 1984, his 48 touchdown season. At that time, a league record. Setting season records for yards and touchdowns. Yeah, I forgot he did. 1984 was an amazing season yeah, he has for Marino, and he had many to come. But that season, he had to face the height of the 49ers dynasty. And, and that, that game wasn't really close. Yeah. Despite all that, Marino set records and reached heights as a passer that no one ever really thought were attainable at that time. It was utter domination. He was a nine-time Pro Bowler, a seven-time All-Pro, a five-time touchdown leader, a three-time yards leader. The only thing he didn't do was win the Super Bowl. Mm. So that's my top ten. Where's top Michael Vick? Quarterbacks that never won a Super Bowl. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Michael Vick should have been number one. the like button and subscribe if you're new to the bottom line view. We do NFL videos just like this. Top tens, discussions, reviews. You know it's football season. We're coming down to the Super Bowl. Super Bowl 56. If you guys are out there and you guys are ready. But I had, that's why I had to do this video. Because the in the football spirit. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it. What, what do you guys think about these QBs? I thought they were Michael Vick. In here, but they had Donald McNabb at number one, and um, a lot of a lot of other QBs um, that hasn't won. If you guys enjoyed this video, uh, like uh, go down, go down, leave a like, and subscribe to the channel, and let me know what you react to next. You guys can let me know by just simply just going to the comments, putting in what you guys want me to react to next, and I can react to that for the next video. But hopefully, you guys enjoyed this one. I'm going to see you guys in the next one.